Welcome back to Raid Shadow Legends. We are going to be going in, we are continuing kind of our uh, building up to endgame series, and we're going to be doing a champion spotlight on Doom Priest, who I just found out was amazing. Uh, here, next. Alright, so let's take a look at our mid-game build for Doom Priest and kind of see what we can do to get her into the end game uh, here, or what we plan to do to get her into the end game. So uh, first, uh, health points of uh, uh, 45,000 uh, health points uh, there. Uh, then we have uh, 2200 attack, 2100 defense, 184 on the speed, 108 crit rate, 119 crit damage, 107 resistance, 87 uh, accuracy. Uh, basically, how we're gonna get her into the end game, get her defense up to around uh, 3000, uh, kind of keep the attack leveled off. Uh, I'm okay keeping these uh, stats as is. Uh, not super needed, but speed would be good. Uh, getting her up to about 220 to 250 speed would be fantastic uh, here, so that she could do her, she could recycle her passive uh, here, which is heal all allies by 7.5% of their HP and removes a random debuff at the start of her turn. Uh, here, obviously, she has mass possession, uh, which is going to give her a 50% increase in attack uh, there on all allies. And then she's not even kidded wow well, uh, and uh, then she is going to do attacks one enemy if hit is critical place a 50 percent increased crit rate buff on a random ally for two turns uh, um, so nothing super special but really what gets us through content is this ability here because it's proccing every single time she goes and she's wiping everyone's debuffs off of them so that's a really important ability and then when you pair her and uh, we're going to see that here momentarily when you pair her with someone like Sylda Drakes that's 17.5% uh, every single time uh, there uh, these guys cycle their abilities so it's a really strong strong um, kind of synergy with Sylda the Drakes now um, you know slowly building out her masteries uh, here um, so definitely a good thing there um, how would I kind of build her I don't know I think we would get yeah I think definitely going high resistance is super important and probably attack and high resistance there's no real need for although I guess you could if you needed to get on uh, you know lay on hands uh, anything that uh, you know heals gets that extra five percent I don't know that might bring her up that might get her up uh, if you're doing all of these uh, here you might get her up to around ten percent uh, actually uh, it's possible yeah it's possible uh, here that uh, might get her up to around 10% but would I really do this just to get those three not really I'd rather um, get out some resistance and uh, some damage reduction uh, here so I think uh, going resistance into damage reduction when uh, hit with a critical hit I think uh, healing nah, she's probably not gonna kill too many people uh, here 30% um, chance block debuffs probably not uh, here so we're probably gonna do those two and then try to hit this one here increase the amount of healing the value of shield buffs this champion receives and then bring her down into here so one uh, you know when she loses 25% of her max HP chance to remove one debuff and then just kind of the normal uh, setup where you're going to go down uh, damage reduction uh, here and then uh, chance to counter attack uh, possibly or even this one uh, increasing turn meter I actually do like increasing turn meter here 
I guess one reason you might go down the support route would be to get timely intervention. But not really. She's not picking anybody up, so eh, probably not. So I'd probably go, uh, you know, here, here. I get rejuvenation. You could go uh, with the extra heal, uh, damage reduction into counterattack, and then unshakable probably for me. And then uh, down the attack tree, you get your uh, attack, crit damage, and then she's not going to be killing anyone. Yeah, she's not really going to be killing anyone uh, here. So go down here, here, Methanical, and then uh, do War Master uh, here, just uh, to get a little bit of extra damage out of her. So not too bad a way to go there if you're gonna go damage but uh, probably would end up being more on the unshakable side of things yeah probably more on the unshakable side of things but we'll have to see because she's removing debuffs anyway so probably not too much of an issue on the debuff side of things yeah But yeah, let's uh, let's build this out. So we're gonna do resistance, or should we do defense? Well, resistance is never a bad thing. So resistance into. I do like increasing the amount of heals. I also like decreasing the damage received uh, there, because uh, she doesn't have the highest amount of. And I want her to stay alive, so I definitely want to have damage reduction. Now you could always go blast proof, like, like into blast proof, so you could do rejuvenation into blast proof, uh, which would give her 5% damage reduction from AOE attacks, which is pretty nice. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go that way because that's going to give her more of a more of a ability to be shielded all right so now should we go into shadow heal oh, possibly i don't see her in too many areas where people are going to be getting healed so i probably i'd actually rather go resurgent here she's not gonna be placing any stun so we're gonna do delay death and yeah probably her last ability that we'll put on will be this one here so crit attack she'll have a you know, chance to do more turn meter that means her passive will come up faster all right so with this normally yeah I guess we should go crit rate crit damage uh, here Crit rate into crit damage. Here we could go into life drinker because she seems to actually be constantly below 50% HP uh, there. But I do like uh, you know getting a little bit more damage uh, out on her. But we could do both actually. Yeah, because I'm not gonna take either of these abilities, bloodthirst. Or shadow heal so yeah let's do both because yeah she's not gonna be doing any world win of death stuff so we're gonna do a uh, single out we're gonna do life drinker uh, here she's definitely not gonna be putting any kind of uh, that kind of damage out now definitely bring it down and then uh, once we get the amount of scrolls, we will go into Methodical and then we will go into War Master. Now, what should be the second one here? Yeah, she doesn't place any kind of debuffs or anything. That's why I haven't built her out with like too much accuracy. Increases ally resist by five for each buff place on them. She really only puts two buffs out I guess that's a temper. That's a 10 resistance 
It's not going to be doing anything Cycle of Violence or Wrath of the Slain. Yeah, I think we're kind of plateaued here, so I'm um, Solidarity seems like there's something to take because of. And then, yeah, eventually we'll get down here. We'll go down to uh, that. All right, so perfect. That kind of what we built her out so far. Remember, we're med game, so you know we slowly got to build these guys out uh, here. Uh, it takes a lot of time. All right, so uh, we kind of have you know, lots of broken sets here. I think what I do if if I was to re-kit her whenever I do that, would probably put her in a high resistance kind of set uh, there. So probably another you know resistance set here. And then possibly, yeah, resistance set with speed, speed kickers on them if we could uh, there, or even a speed set somewhere in here uh, would be nice uh, there as well. All right, so we've kind of seen her stats, we've kind of seen her skills, we did her masteries here, we've looked at her gear so far. Actually, something that we might actually give her here. No, it doesn't really. Actually, it does. It could make sense to give her this blood shield. And here, it gives wear five percent worth of uh, shield after attacking. Uh, her attacks aren't too crazy, but it's something to think about, especially when you pair her with Under Priest Brogni. It's uh, nice to have uh, these blood shield rings because he's gonna keep healing them every single time they put out damage uh, there and we're not losing too much in the way of stats here so this might actually be worth putting on i'm gonna try equipping it and see how this goes here and some of these runs because uh, we're most likely gonna do a lot of these runs with under priest uh, here in the team all right so let's give this a shot All right, so she will be positive affinity here. Now, let's take out uh, that guy. Now, under priest with her, that's good. She's gonna be wiping off and anything. She, passive heals are good here. Passive heals of bad L. Shields, uh, we've got you know what, we might just do this, take Deacon out of here and put Sill of the Drakes in. So that way we have three passive heals. I guess two passive heals, one active heal on his A1. We've got uh, lots and lots of uh, shields, uh, debuff blockers, uh, debuff strippers uh, here, and then uh, she can strip buffs here, plus uh, add in uh, attack down and defense down. So pretty decent team here. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully it's not too long. All right, so let's see how this rolls here. So as always, we always want the ability to be able to stun the hell out of these ads here. Uh-oh, wait a minute, look at that! Yeah. Because we really don't want them taking turns or putting counter attack on uh, there like that. Um, ooh, I really wish I'd brought in like someone like Astralon uh, in here, because uh, he would keep a consistent. Uh, well, the burn is consistent, and then he would keep a very consistent uh, amount of uh, damage going out and CC uh, as well. So other people we have here who are CCing uh, here, it's going to be uh, Scylla the Drakes uh, with her stuns on her kit, uh, her A2, and then um, we have a chance when they hit the shields to actually for the ads to be stunned uh, and to hit uh, a Giant Slayer proc, but uh, any of our abilities that we hit with with Under Priest Brogni 
uh, there because he has a stun set on uh, can damage uh, there and uh, cause all kinds of trouble by stunning them now let's see how we do here actually one thing to look out for I do want to see every time she hits someone if she's getting this shield here so I, I'm watching out for that here it's probably a really small shield uh, considering and I might end up putting that on someone like um, I don't know who the hell's in Night Revenant uh, there well whoever else is in Night Revenant who has a higher attack uh, there I'd probably end up putting it on them now we are completely out of tune here yeah these guys are running really fast so you know that just tells me we need to make our under priest Brogni a little bit faster he needs to be a little bit faster than everybody else. Uh, Bad L is pretty fast here, though. Oh man, I totally didn't uh, see if uh, Doom Priest did her thing. She's actually producing more buffs than anything in terms of damage. Probably wasn't a good idea to put the ring on her. Yeah, don't put a shield ring on her. It doesn't really make any sense. She only got one attacking move. Yeah, it's too bad that uh, shield, that blood shield, uh, there wasn't a, wasn't on uh, one of my sacred knight, uh, sacred order, yeah, sacred order champions. I put it on Astralon. He'd be vicious with that on. But yeah, I might end up putting it on uh, miscreative monster, although I don't think it provides as much stats as it does for does for her because he has a, uh, a health version of one maybe an H uh, maybe a defensive based champion uh, put it on one of those guys yeah well you can see the little sliver of uh, shields that she got there so this actually might be this might actually end up being a little bit difficult we'll see if they're able to get any buffs on us and how she does with wiping them off and how uh, and if she can take some hits from these guys uh, there because we're not going to get as much CC as I normally would like uh, here even though our, our, our heals are going to be pretty epic we should stay pretty topped up uh, there kind of regardless of what happens uh, here we'll have to kind of rely on our poisons to kind of do the job uh, there and our oh snap yeah so we're definitely not so the shields are actually reflecting so much damage uh, there along with the giant slayer prox that uh, he just burned through that first uh, that first hit that he does and uh, we got whacked full 100% uh, no uh, ignoring defense surprise that everyone didn't go down there yeah this just tells me it would be good to bring in a attack based champion uh, there instead of probably doing sill uh, there probably should have did like astralon or something like that or just not even brought in my damn series to tell you the truth because um yeah, I could have replaced uh, Madame Ceres with Astralon. Yeah, you know, the, the reason for that would be uh, he can do defense down with his A1. So not too much of a concern there. But uh, obviously the attack down is really good, especially if you get whacked uh, here. Like we probably are going to get whacked again while these ads are up. Oh man, I am not looking forward to that. I'm hoping we have our shields up uh, when that happens. Because that's going to be a massive amount of uh, damage. Oh wow, we got whacked. 
Man, I didn't see uh, how much uh, damage we reflected, if any. Uh, we might not have reflected any, actually, uh, there, because he burned through our entire amount of shields all in one go. But yeah, it looks like this is not a terrible run. Because we have three passive healers, uh, two passive healers plus the active heal. Actually, it's three passive heals plus... Actually, is it two active heals? Yeah, I guess it's two active healers and two passive healers. Uh, they're obviously Brogni being a heal only when their shield's out. But uh, yeah, it looks, like, uh, it looks like we're in trouble, but I don't think we will be. I think we should be able to finish this level strong. And yeah, 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 there you go. Still, uh, still putting her passives uh, there. The uh, This is not a terrible team. I actually thought we'd have a little bit more trouble than we're having. I guess the comp with all supports allows this with uh, Madame Sears having a consistent uh, attack down uh, here to be a pretty consistent run. All right, cool. All right, so you can kind of see how the thought process behind Doom Priest coming in. She just provides that extra passive heal, the ability to wipe any kind of debuffs that happens uh, there. And the passive heals, even though it's half of what uh, Syl's doing, is still massive. Because now you have four sources of healing uh, instead of what I normally come in with, with is two plus Astralon uh, there. So damage was pretty decently consistent. I know my best time is like four minutes, but yeah, not bad for you know what we kind of saw here. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Oh my goodness, I actually haven't opened up uh, all of the force keeps. So we are going to do that uh, here using Doom Priest uh, here. So. Where should we put her? I guess we can put her uh, instead of the counter attack here and let's go in and smash this guy. Either level, it's all four, so we really can't use too many of the magic champions here. I'm sure I could bring Scylla the Drakes through just because she's a beast. I'm sure I could actually bring. Oh, I'm wondering why I don't have Bad L in this team. Uh, he's force uh, there. Yeah, I guess if uh, if we die uh, here, unlikely, but if we do die, uh, then I'll bring in uh, Bad L. Probably in place of Ethos, I guess? Yeah, probably in place of Ethos, but uh, yeah, probably shouldn't be needed. Should be a pretty consistent run here. Unless something goes off the rails, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, we should have enough burn. Uh, we should have enough speed uh, here. And definitely have enough heals with uh, Doom Priest in here, just kind of consistently healing uh, there. Yeah, this is a pretty decent team, at least to kind of open up this content uh, here as uh, we're kind of going here. But yeah, you can kind of see the utility of Doom Priest. You know, if you don't want a, um, you know, an active heal, but you do want someone who can, like, you know, put one or two buffs on you, and they're not a bad person to bring into kind of any content uh, there at all. All right, we are here in Dragon. Uh, we put together this team with Doom Priest uh, in here, kind of showcasing her. Um, she works really well synergy-wise with. So the Drakes, let's uh, let's take a look. All right, so main thing here and reason that she works in this type of team is uh, her synergy with uh, Scylla the Drakes and Bad Al. So we've got two passive heals uh, there. They both kind of have the same type of uh, passive um, in that they heal. Obviously, uh, legendary Scylla the Drakes being a 10% heal uh, there versus a 7.5% heal. Now, what 
um, Doom Priest brings to the table that Syl doesn't, uh, at least in her passive, is uh, the ability to remove debuffs. So definitely not a bad thing here uh, if these guys are able to take a turn. Okay, you've kind of seen me run this content uh, with other uh, heroes uh, preferring uh, more of uh, control. Uh, here we don't have as much control, but we do have a lot more heals uh, there and uh, kind of controls of debuffs on our side uh, here. So still a lot of control, but not as much as uh, I normally like to have uh, there, but that's okay. We've got tons of heals. Uh, we've got uh, the synergy between pretty much everyone in this team uh, there with shields, uh, debuff blockers, um, passive heals, active heals, so a double, triple active heals uh, there, and two passive heals, and then uh, defense down and attack down. So it's a really well put together synergized team of supports uh, here. Yeah, I don't think anyone is attack based. Yeah, I think everyone's uh, support based uh, here in this team. So, you know, definitely kind of a cool kind of comp to put together here and I never would have thought of this comp unless I was doing uh, this particular uh, showcase for Doom Priest and you know it's kind of something that's neat uh, when you're doing these showcases and you're looking at different uh, people to put together and you know it kind of falls into place uh, kind of magically uh, there so kind of neat now, one thing I have seen on here is uh, I have the the new rings that they have out. So the 5% uh, shield uh, based on her attack, uh, they're kind of testing it out on her to see if it works um, here. And you know, kind of if it does, we might want to bring her into Scarab King. I think I might end up putting it on uh, Misgraded Monster uh, instead uh, there so that he can run through and then he can always cycle uh, through abilities. But, um, you know, she's an interesting one since she does bring that passive heal into the mix. I think as we get more of um, the shield rings and shield like amulets and stuff like that, I believe. Uh, I'll start to kind of, uh, once you find the right stat, uh, main stat, to put it on every one of my champions so they can all go into Scarab King uh, there and we don't actually need a dedicated shield champion. there if we just bring in a bunch of turn meter champions and uh, kind of just whittle down the scarab king uh, there so i think uh yeah the introduction of this uh, these gears uh, there that i have on uh doom priest right now is uh, kind of making uh, Doom Tower should make Doom Tower a little easier, especially Doom Tower hard, a little easier to progress through there if you don't have the required shield champions uh, there, because a lot of people get stuck up on the Scarab King, and uh, he, he definitely is a very tough boss. Now, as you can see here, they're kind of cruising through this, you know, not too much of an issue. Uh, there most of our damage is going to come from poison and reflect damage uh, here when under priest brogni decides to get around to putting it on uh, when he goes for the big hit you're going to see a bunch of damage go back at him hopefully a few giant slayer procs and uh, that's going to kind of wreck his uh, his health uh, really quickly along with the poison so you just saw three so you just saw a bunch of um poison damage at 86,000. And then you saw a bunch of uh, giant slayer. I believe there was three, might have been two, uh, but those are around 58, 59,000 hits. So definitely nice if you're um, building out this type of team to have something where it's like reflect damage and whatnot uh, on that end. Uh, kind of surprised that reflect damage didn't become more of a meta uh, here within the game. I think it's a fantastic skill if it's done correctly, like. It is with Under Priest Brogni uh, there. So, definitely going to kind of look into that. Because I wonder if you had Under Priest Brogni who has that skill passively, 
or when their shield's on, and then you put uh, like a foul hound uh, there or someone else who had that ability as a buff. I wonder if it would have two uh, reflect damages there. Or if he had that uh, legendary, I think it's uh, Brasher, who has a 60% passive uh, reflect damage. If you could have a 30 and a 60, and then you're reflecting a ridiculous amount of damage back at the uh, people who are trying to damage you, essentially. Um, would be some vicious damage going back at uh, the characters. Uh, I do want to test that out. That'd be something uh, interesting to do. But yeah, you'll see here, she'll actually, well, she's probably not, she's not faster than Bad L, so it's not going to work here uh, this time around. But uh, one thing that did happen there just now, I think she was able to wipe the, yeah, I think she was able to wipe the stun and then take a turn, if I'm not mistaken. So that was pretty cool, actually. But yeah, pretty consistent uh, run. I would actually assume with the few times that I've run this particular comp, that this is probably a 100% comp uh, here. You know, there's always that chance of other comps uh, where you could die, you know, especially if you bring in a, a um, attack champion uh, there. But with this comp, because they're all support, there's tons of heals. I we feel really confident actually like running this uh, overnight so I think this might become my new overnight uh, meta team here well, I'm definitely gonna try it uh, you know tonight and see if it uh, kind of works yeah it's been working so far so I think I might just stick with it and you know that's what uh, you know these guys are for is uh, showing you how you can put different champions together that synergize really well why they synergize what the thinking is uh, there and um, you know how that works Ooh, that's actually a pretty decent piece if you have someone who needs like uh, resistance and accuracy uh, there because you have that speed yeah not a bad piece I'm gonna keep that uh, for a specific person uh, here who might need have the have, might have need of that all right we're gonna move on to I think the next one here should be the nether spider so we'll see you there all right so grand thought uh, here is basically uh, cleanse cleanse uh, revive if we need uh, there but passive heal passive heal and nuke and protection uh, there along with some passive healing and then reflect damage uh, there so just uh, you know constantly kind of kind of providing cover for these two who are a little bit more on the squishy side uh, at least with the current builds all right let's uh let's fight these guys all right doom tower heart is end game content so you do have to be kind of smart how you go about it uh, and who you bring in uh, it's uh, especially if you're just going to do it on auto uh, there you really got to have that synergy down just like in you know the rest of the content that you've seen here it's all about synergies when you get or when you're trying to do end game content especially if you don't have you know top notch gear for champions it's uh, all about the synergies uh, there and how champions skills blend into each other uh, there on that end so in terms of the blend for this particular run uh, here it's going to be three, sorry, two passive healers in Sil the Drakes and Doom Priest. You can see here they're getting hit hard, but now um, you've got your Reliquary Tender as the cleanse uh, there, uh, along with Doom Priest. She's about to wipe off uh, some buffs there. We've got a uh, Astralon as your nuke uh, here. That's his only job and uh, Doom Priest helps with that as well by putting attack uh, Increase attack uh, along with Brogni doing that too and then Brogni comes in as kind of a uh, You know get out of trouble kind of guy Right there because uh, he's got that shield So instead of providing heals, he's gonna provide like a massive shield 
there to kind of come up and hit against. And then that shield can proc Giant Slayer. There can proc stuns uh, there if it's the if it's the ads. Uh, so a lot of utility from Brogni uh, there. So you kind of have two like three really good utility champions uh, there in uh, Sil the Drakes, Doom Priest, and Under Priest Brogni. There's lots of people with Priest uh, here in this particular one uh, in their name, uh, Under Priest and Doom Priest. Now, uh, this is, uh, you know, in no way, shape, or form, you know, a fast run. It's not going to be crazy uh, in terms of the speed, but it is going to be very consistent. Uh, here, this is 100% comp. Here, they, um, I've seen them even die, like one or two, uh, one or two of my guys die and then be picked up by Sil. Uh, here, the main, the only person who can't die in this run is Sil the Drakes, because uh, she does need to pick some. She does, she is kind of our only, well, she's not our only reviver, she's the most consistent reviver uh, in this particular group. We actually have three revivers on this one. Astralon is a reviver. Don't get, uh, don't get your job, um, you know, messed up. He, if he does his A2 and kill someone he revives someone so that's a pretty neat uh, little fact there obviously uh, reliquary tender is a reviver as well on her a3 uh, which she won't use unless uh, she needs to all right so you can see here kind of uh, you know what i'm talking about here um doom priest getting low their reliquary tender getting low, but you know as soon as she's able to roll back around, uh, she's able to get uh, that sliver of uh, shield uh, with the attack, and then that gives uh, under priest enough time. Roll back in. Oh, that was three giant slayer procs. That was nice uh, there. Yeah. So um, yeah, the ability to have you know that heal on top of another heal from Silo the Drakes uh, there and then uh, some active heals from uh, Reliquary Tender and uh, Under Priest Brogni. It's a very, very consistent team, so you kind of can't go wrong. Uh, they're bringing this particular team into you know hard, which we're in right now, uh, Doom Tower or even normal Doom Tower if you have these champions there uh two three of these are were free to play accessible so the drakes being that six month login reward and then under priest and astralon both being fusion champions which you can do free to play obviously reliquary tender uh, there she's a rare so you should you should be able to pull her you know relatively easy and then uh doom priest is kind of you know just a you know a hopeful lucky drop uh, there but if you spent any time in the game and you pulled enough shards you should have uh, her by now so we're just slowly gaining uh getting ourselves to halfway the help and um yeah we should start to see this go a little bit faster that's another three giant slayer procs oh my goodness Krabby. oh my goodness yes i love seeing giant slayer procs uh, there it makes me excited now um you know speed decrease here got the attack down Oh, wow. I guess that's Reliquary Tender putting the attack down on her A1 there, and then uh, defense down by Astralon. Now, Astralon's kind of sneaky. You can, he's kind of a support champion rolled up in a CC champion who can have really high attack uh, there and kind of nuke. So he's kind of really good in like three different ways. And you can definitely build him in multiple ways, but uh, I like building him for damage uh, there, and then you know that backup uh, support uh, if needed. But yeah, he synergizes uh, pretty well uh, with uh, Under Priest Brogni there as well.
Another way you could kind of, another person you could bring in here, let's say if you didn't get under Priest, another free champion, a Dexter Blood Twin here with uh, the HP Burn. Uh, would do really well. You kind of place all the HP burn as you're getting hit. Uh, there another giant there, Prague. And um, every time the ads take a turn, they're going to be damaging the boss. Super quick way to kind of burn the boss down uh, there over time. Just like the spider's den. There where you can have uh, all those ads and kind of spread that uh, HP burn. And give the boss a uh, early retirement. All right, so we are three quarters of the way there. This is boiling down right now. And kind of as final thoughts on Doom Priest, I think she's fantastic. Did I know she was fantastic? More giant there pox that just grabs my heart every time. Uh, there, um, did I know she was fantastic until I had to build her out to pass to get past this boss? No, I did not. That's why I made this video uh, here because she is a game changer. Uh, there, with the addition of Almighty Persistence and Almighty Immunity, sorry, Almighty Strength and Almighty Persistence. Her value has skyrocketed uh, inside of this game for uh, end game content here. Uh, so if you pull her or if you have her in your vault and you haven't built her out yet, do build her out. She will be useful in a lot of parts of the game. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a comment let me know um there if any content i can help you with there and uh who our next championship guide should be on have a fantastic day guys i look forward to uh the next video with you guys please throw a subscription on and we'll see you next time let's chat then